You've started your Google ads account. You're getting a whole bunch of clicks, whole bunch of impressions, but you have zero conversions. This is a place I've been in Google ads. A whole bunch of my clients have been in and really, if you've been using Google ads long enough, you probably will stumble into this problem at some point. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through essentially my game plan of how to solve this issue inside of Google ads, step-by-step step, and really go over everything you need to know in order to fix this and make sure you're getting conversions into your Google ads account. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. The very first thing you gotta look at and make sure you're getting conversions is to make sure your conversion tracking is set up properly. You would not believe how many people will set up conversion tracking and then they will not test to see if it's working. Very easy to do, but very often overlooked. I'm going to show you exactly where to find the conversion tracking in Google ads. I'm going to show you all that. You're going to come over here. You're going to come into your Google ads account. This is the very basic home screen. We're going to come over here to goals. We're going to come over here to summary. We're going to click that. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of lead stuff. And a lot of people get confused by this. It's all good. Essentially, all you need is one of two things for lead generation. A phone call tracking of some sort. This can be call rail. This could be Google's own forwarding number. I've got an entire video on how to set that up and how to test it to make sure it's working. I also have one for how to actually track lead form submissions. So when someone types in a form in your actual landing page or website, when they click on it, it will also track that to see you got a conversion. It's very, very important to test all of this stuff. I had an individual, he emailed me, he said, Matt, I bought your course. I'm seeing horrible results and I don't know what to do. And I said, I actually felt bad. I was like, you know what? Let me look into the account, looked into the account and it was something so remarkably simple that no one actually looked at it. He had followed all my conversion tracking step by step. The issue, what he had not done was he had actually not tested the actual call tracking number. When you actually set up the call tracking number, you just have to put a little dash after it. If you follow my conversion tracking video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But you add this like little acronym after the actual landing page and it allows you to actually test the tracking out to make sure it's working. Then you click on it and make sure it pops up and you can call that number and it's exactly the forwarding number. What he had done is he had used this weird button that didn't allow the actual forwarding and the number would just come up as his normal business number and none of the calls were being tracked, therefore leading to terrible results. Something as simple as that could get rid of like 90% of your conversions. So please make sure to actually test this stuff and make sure it's set up properly. Like I said, I have two completely free conversion tracking tutorials, one for phone calls, one for lead form submissions. That's all you need for lead generation. I'll link them up above. Uh, they will make your life so much easier and please test them. The next thing I see in Google Ads accounts quite often is you using improper keywords and things that just have very low buying intent. This is quite often seen with like simple companies like uh, fencing installation, pool installation, stuff like that. Someone will just target the keyword pool or fence. The issue with that is Google's gonna trigger a whole bunch of other keywords because it doesn't really know what you're going after when you just say fence. Are you looking for fat fencing DIY, fencing tips and tricks, fencing companies looking to hire? I'll see companies spending a whole bunch of money with these search terms and then they get no results, literally zero conversions. And then we go into the account and it's like, yeah, all of these keywords are very vague. They have no meaning behind them whatsoever in terms of actually trying to get people in the door. I highly recommend going after high buying intent keywords. I have an entire video on how to structure your actual keyword and the account structure and everything, show you the keywords to go after. That will help you guys out a lot. And if you're having difficulty with this, but making sure you have keywords that have meaning behind them, especially for lead generation. So when you're targeting a keyword, make sure it says like fencing company near me or looking to build a fence or, you know, fence installation near me, something that indicates the person is actually interested by and interested in what you have to offer. If it's just vague like fence, you're really going to struggle with this. The second thing this also does is it generally gives you a low quality score. The issue with having a low quality score is Google will charge you more per click and it will also downrank you essentially in this search terms result. So instead of being at the top, you'll be at the bottom or on the second page, which is not the place you wanna be because most people who are going to the second page are not your target audience. The way we can actually go and figure that out if we have a low quality score is very simple. We just scroll down here all the way to the bottom, hit under assets, search keywords, and then we come over here. As you can see, this is a demo account and you can see that it says not eligible just because we're not running ads. But what I have seen is it will say eligible and then when you hover over it, it will say low quality score. We are still technically running the ads, but we're not really placing them in a good point and we don't really like it. One of the reasons this can also happen is your ads just don't line up with your actual keywords. So you can have a keyword like fence installation and then you have an ad that just says fence company. Those two things are kind of related, but you would much rather have an ad that says 
looking to build a fence or a fencing installation near me, something that immediately comes back to the actual keyword. I have an entire video on how to build all the ads and how to build an entire search campaign. So that should not be a problem if you follow any of those videos and it will show you how to solve all of that very, very quickly. The next common issue I see in Google ads is something called audience settings. And when you come over here to also under, oh, there we go, I love the new uh, display settings uh, Google has, or the, the dashboard's great. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, sorry, getting back on topic, going to audiences under the audience and keywords and content section. What we can see here is a whole bunch of audience segments. We're going to hit show table. And as you can see, we've selected a whole bunch. What people do wrong here is instead of going to the observation mode, like I say to do, they will hit targeting. The issue with targeting is it will limit your actual ads to these certain demographics and audiences. The issue with that is if there's only 100 people in these audience groups, your ads will not appear or they will appear, but they won't appear very regularly and you won't see any conversions for the most part. So please make sure this is in observation mode, not targeting. The next thing I would look into is the actual campaign settings, specifically bid strategy, as this can really alter the amount of conversions you're getting on a regular basis. And I'll share with you a story as I go into the actual settings here. What you're gonna do, click on campaigns, click on campaigns again, come over here to settings, and we're gonna click on whatever campaign we want to adjust. For this one, we have it set in maximize clicks, which is what we recommend starting every campaign in in order to build as much data into the account as possible, give AI what works, what doesn't work, and essentially switch it over to target CPA as quickly as possible, generally 20 to 30 conversions. But you need those necessary clicks in there in order for Google's AI to work effectively. We had an account, we ran maximize clicks for the first two weeks, we saw like one conversion in the first two weeks, absolutely horrendous results for this client. And we were struggling to figure out why is it so bad? Normally maximize clicks is bad, but it's not that bad. So we switched it over to target CPA to see if there would be any sort of effect because we had gathered the data we needed. And within two days we had, it was like seven conversions in the account, unreal. But we wouldn't have gotten those conversions had it not been in maximized clicks. Now, the important part of this story is you need to have some sort of data gathering face in order to have the account work well but sometimes that actually sucks and it's not a great thing to be in. And you need to be well aware of this before launching a Google ads campaign. Sometimes the account is just not gonna be great for the first little while because Google's AI needs to gather that data. We learned this firsthand using maximize clicks. Sometimes it works very well. You can see a whole bunch of conversions in the first day or two. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks, unfortunately. The next thing I wanted to address is using a bad landing page or using your website for Google ads. More often than not, you don't wanna be directing traffic to your actual website. The reason being is websites convert at a very low percentage when compared to landing pages. In our personal experience, websites convert anywhere from zero to 10%. We've seen websites just don't convert because they're that bad. And then we switch them over to a landing page and out of 100 people, 20 to 40 people will convert into leads. A substantial difference from zero to 10 and well worth the money if you can get a cheap landing page builder and host everything on the landing page builder. It's a lot easier. And essentially all a landing page does is allows the person to either call you or actually email you through the email form. Like I said before, that's the only thing you need to track. It allows you to put up social proof and only give those users those two options. It makes the entire process very, very simple. I would recommend using a landing page builder called Landingly. It's super simple, super cheap, and just about anyone can afford it if you're using Google Ads. If you're gonna be spending thousands of dollars a month on Google Ads, you might as well quadruple the amount of leads you're gonna get by just using a landing page. Super simple and well worth the money. Another thing I wanted to mention about landing pages is when you're building them, you essentially wanna build them in conjunction with your ad and keyword. You want your keyword to line up with your ad and your ad to line up with your landing page. So when someone types in, for example, fencing installation near me, they're directed to an ad that pops up in Google search network that says looking for fencing installation near me, click this or call now for a free quote. When they click the ad, they then go to a landing page, which reiterates the same thing, provides social proof, allows them to either call you or to fill out a lead form submission and keep everything lined up. That's called message match. When there is no message match and you have a vague keyword going to a vague ad, going to a vague landing page, you have what is called cognitive dissonance. People essentially go, well, you told me one thing and then another thing happened. I don't like that. It stresses out my brain and I'm gonna leave. This is one of the things you learn in marketing school. Uh, <laughs> And this is something that you don't want to occur because people will just get to your landing page. You'll waste a whole bunch of money on clicks and impressions and they leave. They don't convert because they go, hey, you said one thing in your ad and it's not on your landing page or your website. I'm going to go somewhere else. 
Another thing to mention about landing pages is complexity. You want to keep your landing pages as simple as possible. You don't want to stress out the person on the other side of the screen going, what do I do? You don't want to have 97 different phone numbers. I've been on websites where they have five different phone numbers in their actual heading section, which say emergency, non-emergency, yada, yada, yada. It's unreal. Like which one should I call? That's going to stress the person person out on the other side of the screen. It's called cognitive load. Again, building up the essentially stress in your brain and go, you know what, I'll just go somewhere else. That's also going to cause this person to leave. You want to keep it simple, one or two calls to action. That's it. It's going to be really, really easy to do for most people. The hard part is not overdoing it. And if you're looking to build a great landing page, by the way, I will link up a video on how to build a simple one up above using the software I recommend. Super easy, super simple to do, and will definitely help out your Google Ads account. The second last thing I did want to mention is making sure you have a good offer. I have seen this specifically with like e-commerce companies where they'll be selling something that's complex. It's not easy to communicate what the actual offer is. If you're selling some type of high-end software, you have to be able to convince the person generally in one sentence what you're offering and why they should pick you. If they have to read five paragraphs to understand what you do, they're just going to leave and go somewhere else. Also, a lot of companies that think people understand the industry lingo, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't understand the moving industry lingo, fencing lingo, like what type of beams and stuff like that. They don't know. They're going to ask your opinion on that and what you think is best for them more often than not. Some people will understand, but you don't want to alienate the 90% of people who just don't have a great knowledge at whatever you have to offer. So make sure your offer is simple and easy to understand. Same goes with your ad and same goes with the actual keywords you're going after. Make sure simple stuff that almost anyone can understand. Grade eight language is what you're aiming for. And that will significantly help with increasing conversion rates because more people will understand it and be like, yep, that that's for me. I'll get a, I'll submit my lead form or I'll call them right now. The final thing I wanted to mention is making sure you're optimizing your account on a regular basis, making sure you're adding negatives. So if you have a whole bunch of search terms that no one is actually going to convert and call you with, and they're typing into Google, like fencing installation companies looking to hire, you can have Google ads spending a whole bunch of money on that, but no one's actually going to call you. You need to remove those from your account. You need to go into your negatives, add them as search terms. A lot of people get confused on what to actually optimize. So I created the Google ads optimization checklist. It's completely free and the link is down below. It walks you through I want to do on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. It also allows you to jot down your results so you can see you're improving month over month. And as you can see, a few people are already using this inside their own accounts. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about Google Ads, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, and I wish you all well.